let's get started. Good morning, everybody. Good evening in India. Uh, my name is Yuri Punj from Student. I am the president and co-founder uh, and uh, Texas Tech University um, and uh, a presenter, Kent Norris, who'll, who's going to give you an overview of the school, you know, what it takes to get in, some of the requirements, and um, frankly speaking, uh, both myself and Ajay actually uh, went and visited the campus, it, and it's, uh, you know, one of the most amazing places you've seen. I think it's one of the largest campuses in the United States um, and has wonderful academic uh, programs. So uh, I'm not going to do too much of the talking. I'll, let, I'll leave that for Kent. Uh, let me just briefly introduce you um, to Kent. Kent is... Uh, currently the international recruiter for Texas Tech University so you know he he knows all about the international uh, process and um, and obviously has worked from uh, with students from India he uh, he's originally from the state of Oregon but now uh, loves West Texas and Lubbock where uh, where uh, Texas Tech is uh, located he has a uh, BS from Brigham Young University an MS from Oregon State University, and my goodness, is uh, working on a PhD at Texas Tech. So uh, yes, clearly, he loves uh, academics. Kent, um, Kent, thank you so much for doing this. Uh, we're excited to learn about Texas Tech, and uh, what we'll do is, you know, after your presentation, we'll take some Q and A and uh, go from there. Thanks, thanks again for doing this. Go ahead. Excellent. And, and hey, jump in anytime if. If the presentation isn't, if what you're seeing is not what you're supposed to see or something like that, Yuri, so just kind of speak up and let me know. Sure, uh, sure. Well, as the, um, and, and you guys can see the namaste y'all on, on the screen right now. Is that right? Yeah, we can see it. Okay, okay great. So, um, yes, thank you. Welcome. Happy to be here. Um, I also have in the room with me Ashton Troxel, who is a colleague of mine, and she's a she's another um, admissions and recruiter uh uh, employee here, and so she's she's going to help me with some Q and A's, or if I mess up on anything, she's going to jump in and and, and tell me um, that I've that I've said something wrong. Uh, but uh, we're happy to be here. We're it's sunny and great here in Lubbock. Um, I just want to explain. So we're we're from Texas Tech. Our logo is a double T, as you see there, and and we love this. Um, this is actually a picture of a of a. Um, a tapestry that was uh, done in India and then sent back here um, and it's been hanging in our student life office for a long time and so we love it but the one thing that is kind of Texas is famous for is the y'all phrase which is you all which isn't really grammatical um, but y'all is a really um, popular phrase around here to meaning hey why don't y'all come over or um, y'all come to Texas Tech so um, this is just kind of something that we we really love. Um, all right, so <clears throat> one of our one of our our themes or phrases here is "Think Global, Think Texas Tech." That's our that's our motto for our the Office of International Affairs, which is what what we work out of. This is a little bit more of an updated double T, kind of some of the branding here at Texas Tech. Um, and something I want to start with, uh, we have a we have a crest. Um, and what I love about our crest is some of the symbolism behind it. So if you see, and if you kind of, if you can see my mouse at all, um, the what we'll do is we'll start here, kind of explaining this. The lamp and what these represent. The lamp represents education here at Texas Tech, um, and I love the symbolism for the lamp and education. That the more you put in the lamp, um, you got to keep the oil in it. You got to keep it full. So, or at least some oil in it, so that the the fire stays lit, which I, I love that symbolism in relation to education. And then the star, the this, the single star, the Texas is considered the Lone Star State, um, so that's kind of an ode to the state um, book for faith or religion. Um, it, no matter what religion that is, uh, there's this uh, that to symbolize the importance of it. And then key, uh, which is the one I want to hit home with actually represents home. Uh, we want Texas Tech to be a home for students and we want parents to feel that um, Texas Tech can be a home that's safe for their, their children to come to and we want you to feel like it's home and what's so great about schools 
and education, and I know this coming from um, multiple schools that I've gone to, when you graduate from a school and have experiences at a school, when you come back and visit, there's a special feeling about it. And that feeling, um, I think, is that same feeling you get when you when you come back home and you've been away for a while. So we so we know that Texas Tech is a home for a lot of students, and we want that we want you to feel safe and comfortable, like that. A um, little bit about our agenda today. Uh, we'll just talk about some academics. Um, we're going to talk about Lubbock a little bit. Academics. Um, we're going to talk about scholarships of student life, and then how to apply. We'll also address some things about the graduate school as I go along. But I want to start with this video. Um, I hope you can hear it well enough, but it's just a quick little um, video kind of showing some things about Texas Tech, um, highlighting some things, some athletics, some student life stuff. So here we go. People always enjoy parts of that. It's a little heavy on the sports, but we'll, we'll show you some more videos as we go on. Um, Lubbock, Lubbock, Texas, we are located um, in West Texas. Um, we're about four hours from Fort Worth or Dallas area. Um, and what is so great about it, you can kind of see on the map there how we're in proximity to other places. Uh, we are way out here, but there's a neat feeling about being in a, in a college town. Our town of Lubbock is about a quarter million people. So there's a lot of people here, and but what's so great about it is the town um, is centered on the school and the university here. We also have a big medical school here, and so there's, that brings a lot of people in. Um, and so it's it's a growing town. It's it hasn't stopped, and there's there's plenty to do here. Um, and what people love is you don't get the rush of the big cities. You still still feel like you're in a in kind of a smaller Texas town. But you don't, you don't, you have all the entertainment that, that you get from big cities, and so people really love, um, love it for that. Some highlights from the university: we're about 36,000 students, so we're big. We're, uh, you know, considered a large university. Um, about 150 undergraduate degrees, 100 masters, and 50 doctorate degrees. Um, a top 100 research institution, uh, considered a tier one research. Carnegie Mellon um, is the is the organization that, that makes that classification, um, and we are a part of the um, Carnegie classification for a tier one is research institution. We're a large campus with 1,800 acres on it. So, um, and as you already mentioned, there's um, it, it, it's expansive. It's we've got a lot of property and a lot of things happening here, and so it's actually really it's a great um, atmosphere to be in. We have a lot of top rated programs. Um, our petroleum engineering is one of the one of the more highlighted uh, programs. Our college of engineering, we'll talk a little bit more about that. I'll highlight some of the degrees, but just as a quick run through what some are. So our academics, let's talk about those. Uh, we have quite a few. Uh, we have about we have about ten academic colleges. Um, I just want to highlight some of the the majors. Um, as a part of each one of these with the College of Agricultural and Sciences and Natural Resources. Um, one that, that's quite popular is Agricultural and Applied Economics. Um, what I love about Texas Tech is they try to bring in 
cross, I guess, um, what's the phrase I'm looking for? Uh, they try to mix, I guess, careers in with it. So you see you have economics in with agricultural. Um, so they, they apply business principles in with, with ag. Um, and you see that throughout a lot of the majors um, at Texas Tech. Under agriculture and natural resources, there's also like food science. In the College of Art and Sciences, there's the normal bio, uh, biochemistry and biology and chemistry. There's also global studies, sports management. That's where you have your history, social work, sociology. So that's a really big college as far as majors go. Um, we have the Ed College of Education, um, our Honors College, College of Media and Communications, uh, which has actually our, our, like our advertising in it, um, journalism, electronic media and communications. Uh, we have a agri architecture, um, College of Architecture, which is actually a really, really good program. Um, those students work hard. It's a hard one to get into. Uh, with the Rawls College of Business Administration, um, it's what you expect there with, with business schools. So you have accounting, one, one unique one here is energy commerce. And so it's taking um, the energy business, which is obviously popular here in Texas um, with the petroleum and then wind energy, and you're mixing in the business principles and with that. And so that's a really good mix, um, again, of you're tying in some science with the business, which I think is really quite interesting. Uh, and then we also have supply chain management, which is um, becoming a really popular degree uh, for students to go on because they're seeing the need um, for people through, throughout the supply chain and knowing how to manage those. So th th that's kind of some highlights with the Rawls College of Business. Um, our College of Engineering, the Whitaker College of Engineering, uh, chemistry, ch chemical engineering, civil engineering, computer engineering, computer science, construction, electrical, environmental, industrial, mechanical, and petroleum. So there's quite a few um, engineering degrees uh, with our um, College of Human Sciences, we have a unique one in apparel design and manufacturing. We also have personal finance and planning within there. And then the uh, College of Visual and Performing Arts is, as probably you'd expect it, like our art and dance and theater. So that's that's a kind of running through really quickly with some of those degrees, but wanted you to know there's a, you know, 150. Uh, that, so it's quite a few. It's hard to even keep track of them for us. So when people ask, do you guys have that degree? We have to reference a, a source because we can't keep them all in there. But it's um, there, there's a lot to choose from. Um, obviously, our STEM, the Science, Technology, Engineering, Mechanical, um, is a is a is or on management is actually a, kind of a focus here. So you'll see a lot of that. I want to talk about um, some scholarships. Uh, one of the things, though, something we get asked a lot, well, why, why should I come to Texas Tech? Hopefully I've highlighted enough, some of those things for you, but one, one reason we get a lot of students, too, is because of our, um, our scholarships are quite generous. And so you can see the chart there. I won't go through each of those. But one thing to keep in mind, the, the wording at the bottom of the screen here, um, students who receive a competitive scholarship of $1,000 or more also qualify for an in-state tuition waiver, which is over $12,000 worth of savings per academic year. Now, what's great about this, this applies to undergraduate students, and it also applies to graduate students. So if a graduate student receives a $1,000 scholarship from Texas Tech, one of our competitive ones, then they get in-state tuition. And so students are, not only do they get the scholarship, they get um, in-state tuition costs instead of, you know, most schools or regularly if you don't have a scholarship, you're paying the non-resident fee and some, which we only have non-resident and, and resident. Some schools even do international um, tuition, which can really um, start to add up on students. So you get a great academic institution and you get students who are eligible for scholarships and then you get a really affordable school for students. And so... Um, hey, can I, can I yes. just... Can yep. I just jump in for one second? Yes. Um, uh, listen, I think uh, to the audience out there, um, Kent's being very modest. Um, this is among the best values in the country um, in terms of the scholarship amounts that uh, Texas Tech gives for the quality of education um, you're going to get. So 
uh, like I said, we visited it. We know Texas Tech well. You know, we've partnered with the the university. Um, I mean, I I just think uh, people need to realize uh, the the value and kind of return on investment you're getting here. It's it's absolutely remarkable. And sometimes, can't I, I I don't believe what you're offering, but uh, you know, it's quite un un unbelievable relative to you know when you see. Uh, you know the cost of colleges. Um, so you know, let's put it in perspective. If you go to, you know, a comparable school, you can pay as much as you know forty to fifty thousand dollars a year, um, and you know, over two years, that's two hundred thousand dollars, and you know, plus other expenses. So you know, it's 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 quite remarkable and 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 a phenomenal opportunity. Thank Sorry, you. Kent, I had to get that in there. Oh, thank you. We I, I appreciate your input. Yes, I certainly I certainly appreciate that. Um, and uh, we'll make we'll make sure, Yuri. I'm not quite sure on um, how we can communicate with those who've registered for this. I don't know if I can send them any materials, but, but yeah, we'll get that all that information to you, Kent, and uh, we'll we'll put we'll put together something for everybody who's attended plus the registrations and stuff. That would be, that would actually be perfect because I because I'd love to send them um, some details and even like even our um, our online brochure talks about it has our tuition costs and all that. Absolutely. Love to, love to, yeah, we can we can send those information. But thank you, Yuri, for jumping in. I appreciate it. We that's how we feel. You certainly put it nice, even coming from you know. I don't want to be too jaded or too salesy, so I, I appreciate that. Um, all right. So, and so I actually want to point out to you, and we'll talk about this in a little bit. Um, while the SAT or ACT is required for scholarships, it's actually not required to be admitted. Um, but you do have to have it if we if you want to get a scholarship, um, and so yeah, so I, w I wanted to at least point that out. We'll, I'll, I'll mention that again though as admissions. We do have tr really great transfer scholarships as well. So if if you are the student, and and this is and for a lot of students, this is the the right path and and the good choice to go is to go to a two year school and then transfer into to a four year school. So we have a lot of students that go to two year schools. They work on their English or they they want to experience it a little bit without jumping into a big four-year school, um, and so we have transfer scholarships that work the same. And then you don't have to take the ACT or G or a SAT. And all we're looking at for transfer scholarships is um, at least 60 transferable hours at a 3.5, and then you're getting a three thousand thirteen thousand dollar scholarship um, for the for your t next two years here at Oregon or at, at Texas Tech. Um, so we we think that's also another good deal. So this 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 principle applies to new freshmen, transfer students, graduate students, and so this is a quite quite a great thing. Um, student life is expansive uh, here at Texas Tech. We work really hard um, at providing a lot of opportunities for students. So the what I, I love this picture: the international students attending a football game together. This is all of them, and we're having a tailgate at at the um, International Cultural Center and they're all piled in front of our big globe that we have out in front of our building here. Um, and so w we do a lot to focus on our international students. Every spring we have a, um, a spring break trip and they go down to Junction, Texas where they, um, where, where they camp and float the river and it's just for international students and some others to come and help. And then just here at the campus there's we have this big recreation center. We see you see a picture of the leisure pool at the rec, and so it's like a lazy river. It's like a water park here. Um, so there, the, and they have activities. They do mo movies in the in the in the pools, and they, so they they have these uh, really great events going on for students all the time. Not to mention Division One sports and athletics um, that keeps keeps our our students quite busy. Oh, here's another video with the spring uh, quickly highlighting the spring break um, trip this last year.
Okay. Very good. And then here's another um, one with our showing the color fest. A lot of universities are starting to do this. We've been doing it for quite a few years, um, and this is just a, another fun video showing um, highlights of our student life here. Oh, that actually went too fast. There we go. Basically, Holy is just like an introduction to like spring. We basically make a big celebration about it. We're just throwing a bunch of color at each other, eating some food, listening to music. We'll be having free performances, free food, free dance, free color. It's like a fun thing that we do. So the colors are essentially for being able to mask everybody's faces and not really be able to tell um, one person from another. It's really promoting the unity and like the cultural diversity through, through those colors. Well, how was your experience from last year? It was really fun. There's a lot of people. I was with my friend, so it was like a memory for us. It was, it was really great. What are you looking forward to in this event? The color throwing, yeah. As you can tell, uh, we have we have a lot of fun here. There is a there's a large um, Southeast Asia population, student population here on campus, and then a, a large uh, population of Indian students here on campus. So the the, the culture certainly um, bleeds into this the, the student life here. Uh, Want to talk about how to apply um, some of the more nuts and bolts of applying here to Texas Tech? So. Our, um, the first place you would go is applytexas.org, um, and then once you've completed that student application on there, we reach out to you and tell you how to um, submit your your transcripts. And so what we're asking for is um, all all of your um, not all college transcripts, um, all all transcripts together, including um, proof of high school completion. So if you are a transfer student or a graduate student. Um, you're going to need to submit your academic work um, after high school and then also during high school. Uh, we also need a proof of English proficiency. Um, we like the TOEFL score. We're looking for a TOEFL score of 79 or IELTS of 6.5. Um, we also have a conditional admit. If, if a student does not um, have the TOEFL score of 79, then they can they can uh, go to our English Language Center um, here in Lubbock and be conditionally admitted, live as a student, you have a full access as a student, you can live on campus, but we're just waiting for you to get that 79 score and then you can take classes um, here on campus. So there is a conditional admit. So even if you want to come, we're making it easy for you to get here. Um, we don't have um, crazy requirements. We just ask that you apply and let us make you know make that decision. So. Um, we can, if you're a transfer student, we can waive the English, English proficiency. If you go to another school for two years um, and then complete two English classes at a, um, a community college here. And so um, that's certainly something if you want to know more information about that or even our suggestion about what good schools could be to, be to transfer into um, or, or from, we can, we can help you with that. Um, also, with the graduate students, so the, those of you who are graduate students out there, um, 
every um, department does uh, the graduate applications different, right? So uh, the college of, or the graduate school has a standard that they have set. Say, for example, a 3.0. Every student from an undergrad needs to have a 3.0 in order to apply to one of our programs. Okay, but each department might have completely different standards as well. So the College of Engineering might have a GPA requirement of like a 3.5, right? And so it's hard to tell which. Um, it's hard to, to to really say, hey, this is what it takes to get in as a graduate student. Really, what that would take is you going to that university or to that program. Each program within the college is going to have different uh, requirements as well. And so you would need to research that program, reach out to people who are in charge, um, read online. You can even call, email, do do your best to find out what they are requiring. And, and you know, the smart students are those who are doing that during, um, well, I guess those who plan ahead was what I'm try trying to say. So if you're an undergraduate student now looking at graduate school or you're you're out of it, Plan ahead. Um, know what to expect. Know what your goals are as you as as you're re trying to reach those um, for graduate school. So graduate schools are all different. Um, as you can see, we have over 100 programs. Um, each one of those have different requirements for them. Um, so again, look at look at it, research it, um, do do some of the the homework in there. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll show, so that, that's it about the, that's pretty much, it's pretty much basic. So it's applytexas.org. We reach out to you. You start communicating with us. You submit your documents, um, your proof of English, your transcripts. Now something, again, um, to keep in mind, I'll go back to this. Uh, the ACT and SAT are not required for admissions, right? For ed but if you want to be considered, if you're an incoming a student, if you want to be considered for scholarships, you have to have an ACT and S SAT, um, and then we'll look at your high, you look at your transcripts and your test score, and that's what qualifies you for scholarships. If you're a transfer student, you do not have to have that. We would just look at your academic work. So there's there's that difference. So if you're new freshman, you got to have an ACT and SAT to get a scholarship. Um, so we have one last video to show, uh, and then we'll then we can actually go right to um, some questions. So we're almost done here. We'll show this, and then we'll take questions. a little like feel good quick little you know 15 second commercial um, and so right now we will um, we'll uh, we'll take your questions great thanks Kent uh, uh, anybody in the audience who wants to ask a question just raise your hand or type it in uh, in the chat box uh, Tanmoy do we have questions yes we do have questions So uh, I guess we'll start quickly with the, something that was posted, Kent. Um, what is the best and most popular engineering stream at Texas Tech University in terms of getting jobs? So uh, can you just address, uh, you know, the, uh, the the number one thing we get from from parents obviously is, um, you know, sending their their kids all the way to the United States and. Uh, um, you know, what's the job market like? What will my what will my kid do after after graduation? Stuff like that. Talk about some of the placement opportunities as well. Yeah, that's a great question. So, um, all right. To, so the first question is what's the most popular and probably the um, probably the best to get a job. The, our number one degree here is our petroleum engineering. As far as ranking, it's also our hardest to get into because what happens when you have a, a good degree that's successful is more people want to get into it and therefore the, the admissions requirements or the requirements to succeed and get into that um, becomes a little more stringent. So our petroleum engineering is would be the, would be the, the greatest. Our college of engineering is all um, very popular. Um, they have some 
they have some of those requirements. Uh, once you get into the College of Engineering, there's a foundational program you have to you have to basically qualify, and they'll decide if you can continue um, with engineering. Um, so as far as job placements and 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 that are. In, and and this is this is my opinion and what we're seeing. If if you're focusing on the STEM degrees, you're, 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 I think your chances increase. Obviously, OPT, which is those um, um, the the sp the jobs that are available for for non citizens to stay here in the United States and work, is all contingent on you finding a job within the basically the STEM career. And so. If if you're hoping to to study here in the United States, and then also have some experience working here before going back home, um, if if you're focusing on the STEM, the sciences, the management, the engineering, I think your your chances are are great. Um, uh, so you know, and Texas is ripe with opportunities. Um, so they could even stay in Texas or. Um, the United States and all, but OPT, if you're, if you're focusing on the STEM, those chances are, are quite good. Right. Yeah, and Ashton wants to add something here. Sure. The, the engineering college does a really great job of preparing students. Every semester they have a job fair, and there's at least a hundred employers that come to that, and it's a huge event, mm -hmm. um, and that's every semester. So students have, if they're here for four years, eight opportunities to talk to future employers and my experience working with international students the employers are very open to having international students work for them and work around their visas so there are a lot of opportunities in the engineering college does a really great job at preparing students to find jobs that's fantastic the other question um uh uh Nation, uh is um, the whole idea of curriculum in terms of coming from India, uh, obviously you see people from the CBSC curriculum, you see people from IB, um, you know, can you give us a sense of how the admissions office kind of looks at, uh, you know, particularly students from India in terms of what curriculum they're following, you know, and, and just give us a little bit of insight into that. Got it. Well, just, just to preface this, Kent and I don't do any of the admissions. Deciding. Right. Yeah. So Understood. We have, there are four people on our team, and Kent and I do the recruiting, and then there are two admissions counselors who do all the admissions work, and they will look at the transcripts and determine if you could get college credit for some classes or how it will come in. So we have students in all over the spectrum and I don't think that we've ever had any problems with students coming from India. Never. I, I, I've never heard of cases where, hey, this transcript looks like this or it's not going to be good enough. That, that's never been the case in our experience from, from India. So um, from India students are, they're, they're some of our best students and so uh, we know that education prepares them well to study here in, in America, and usually that is reflected on on how we evaluate those transcripts. Got it. Um, the other, obviously, we've got some, uh, you know, twelfth graders who are, you know, in the midst of this whole process, and you know, are stressed out about it, and 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 um, is is it? Can you give us some sense of the deadlines, or you know, some people. You know, a question. Well, if I send it in earlier, do I have a competitive advantage or and things like that? Can you give us a sense of the deadlines of when students have to apply by and stuff like that? That's yes, it's, yes. In fact, that should should actually be a little bit more part of my um, my presentation. More um, as far as getting applications in sooner rather than later, we always suggest getting it in um, quickly because. Um, the sooner you get it in, the better your chances of getting scholarships if you if you're within the qualifying um, um, ranges. So, but it is possible that it, you you do qualify, and if you apply later, if you're on late on that timeline, that the money could be gone and no scholarship for you. So, we certainly suggest students apply early. 
Now, as kind of the grand picture, if you're pulling pulling out, look at an entire year. If you're wanting to come fall of 2018, um, our our application is open now. So to kind of put that in perspective, students can be applying now for next year, for fall of 2018. Um, our deadlines for fall of 2018 um, for new freshmen is actually not until May. And so we, we leave a big space in between now when it's open to May 1st, which is the application deadline. But as a, this is my, this is a rule by Kent. I don't think students should go past December 1st without applying to a school if they're going to, uh, hoping to go um, come in fall. So December 1st is, the, to me, the de facto um, um, uh, deadline, right? Yeah, so that's and, what we suggest. And then, and does that, uh, is that applicable to the whole um, scholarship process as well? Obviously, you know, you've got a fixed amount of funds and, you know, all that stuff. So I would assume, you know, there's, there's a little bit of correlation as you give out money and stuff like that. Yeah, so yes, the, if, if, if a student applies by December 1st, they will be fully considered for scholarships. That, and, and so that increases their chances. Once they come after December 1st, um, some of those opportunities start to decline. Like the departmental scholarships, those ones are, are divvied out quickly. They actually have a de deadline of December 1st. We still have academic ones after that, but at least the departmental ones, which some of our students get, um, it's always good to have that in before December 1st. Yeah. Got it. Um, let's see. We've got this one question. I don't know if you could answer this or we'll get back to them. Is Do you have any requirements from students from a British curriculum? No, no, no additional um, requirements. Sometimes those A-levels can fulfill some credits here, um, but we just leave that up to our evaluators to go go through that. But there's nothing, nothing unique. All it is... Um, is the same. It's you give us your transcript. If you want to be considered, you got to take the ACT or SAT. If you want the scholarships, um, and then we also just need to see completion of high school. Um, so, uh, so and that can come through those transcripts. So, uh, n nothing unique um, with the British curriculum. Uh, if anything, those A levels can actually be uh, a, a somewhat of a benefit. Got it. Um, let's see. Let's see, is there an advantage if I have a sibling who's graduated from Texas Tech University? Um, no, there's no there's no advantage. I think our, our admissions is actually pretty generous. You know, a lot of, um, there, there might be some schools where, where they have the legacy um, points or whatever, but, but we're just, I mean, if you're, if you qualify, you qualify, and our admissions is, uh, requirements are pretty generous that way. So I don't, I don't think it will be a problem. Um, but, but if that's certainly something that we would like to know through the application process, we, we would right. love that, and, and that's gonna, that's gonna um, certainly help the student because they have such a great source about the school. All right. Um, let, well, let me ask you this one question because I get this from parents all the time and, and to a certain extent students. Um, you know, without going into the whole, you know, politics and Mr. Trump and all the things, but, um, you know, in, in fairness, you know, there have been some incidents uh, related to uh, yeah. Indian, Indian students and, you know, parents are, uh, you know, afraid for safety and, you know, what's the climate like, you know, how does this yeah. impact... Can you just you know talk about that and and you know and maybe in particular in Texas as well about the whole safety issue, the acclimation issue, and you know and if you want to comment on the politics, we can we can talk about that as well. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> well, I I this is this is exactly why I ended with the 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 screen that you see right, and so you are welcome here. That because of the politics that came out, um, there was a there was a lot of scare. A lot of people were afraid. And, and we were too, honestly. We didn't, as a, as administrators here in America, and I speak for all of higher ed pretty much, we were all kind of nervous about how it would go for, for students or for immigration or things. I'm glad things have settled down, right? But yeah. 
out of it came this beautiful message from universities that they are that students are welcome here, right? Of all the places to be, universities are um, are some of the safest, and uh, um, we've had no incidents of, of my recollection. Our students are adjusted well. There's a great community of people who who love students. Um, our um, our Indian Student Associations. There's good groups here. Um, you, you're welcome to talk to any of them and us um, a, a, about any insecurities. But in general, uh, Texas Tech is a really safe place. There's um, there, there's a lot of resources for students as well, and so um, it's a it's a good place. You have a home uh, in Texas Tech in the Office of International Affairs with us, um, and so I, I don't. I, I rarely I, I see more the fear from outside students than I hear the concern about students here on campus right I don't I don't people feel safe our international students feel good about it and so um, we're, uh, we're we're very pleased with the way our campus has handled it got it no that's that's fantastic um, Ashley wants to contribute to that go ahead sure yeah I'd love to hear it and I would say no one can answer that question better than our current international students. Yeah. And we do have a group of international ambassadors who get paired up with students who are applying. So they have answered this question over and over again so eloquently, eloquently and Kent and I can't even put it into words. <laughs> so right. if you have questions and you want to be connected with a current student and you want them to be from India we can make sure that happens. Okay, great. Uh, one thing that that's 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 fantastic, and you know maybe at some point, um, you know we may do something, you know, with your ambassadors and particularly with, uh, you know, some of your Indian students out in out in Texas Tech and stuff like that. That that could be something we could we could take a look at. Um, we've got a couple of people who want to actually ask you the question directly on air. If you okay. can hear them, Ashton, and, and then uh, Kent, I'll, I'll repeat it. But uh, let's see, Monica wants to, Monica Balla. Uh, Tanmoy, can you put them on? Monica, you're on air now. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Um, I have a question. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes we, can. Can. we can. Yeah. Like, um, um, we are looking uh, for the admission for my son who is uh, basically right now in 11th, okay? And um, he plans to um, take a break after 12th, okay? Yep. So will the chances of getting the scholarship impacted if he takes a break after 12th? No, no, not at all. It's exactly uh, we, we will still look, we will certainly still look at, at the, the transcript, right? And so, we don't. We wouldn't take a look at that and go, "Oh, this is two years old, or this is a year old, and this is therefore nothing like that." We would just look at the transcript and the ACT and SAT. Now, I do suggest he, him or her taking um, the SAT towards the end of that study. Usually, when students take a break and then come back and try to take an SAT or S ACT, they right. struggle once. The, once you kind of put, remove yourself from education a little bit, the testing can be difficult. It's easy to jump back into university life. That's fine. And I think there's a lot of maturity that can happen from taking an off year. I, I think that can actually be really good. Uh, and then it can also give your, your brain a break, right? So right. I, I, th I think that could be a really good thing. Um, just make sure that the test is taken while he's still in school and studying and education is still on the brain that way. Yeah. Right, right. But yeah, that it would not sense. affect. It would not affect. We'd still look at everything the same. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Great question, Monica. Thank you. Okay, you are on your now. Please go ahead. Hi. Hi. Um, so I wanted to know a little bit more about your physics programs. This is for my son again. Uh, who is uh, looking at research uh, in physics, okay. uh, particularly particularly in um, theoretical physics. 
so if you could tell me you know the kind of researches that happen in your uh, college uh, you know in general and particularly in physics you know i i wish uh, i wish i had that off the top of my head what i will do though i would love to get your email address and send you do a little research about some of our our recent projects I, I i can tell you a couple highlights of the physics program and um, we do have we actually have i think about five or seven maybe astronauts who have come through texas tech who are current astronauts and and part or working for nasa and physics is a big part of their training and so and we have a great program that does prepare a lot of, um, of, of people for really uh, impactful and high-end jobs. Um, so, so, but but I would love to, if if I could, if I could get your email address and then and then send you some more information on the physics program. That would that would be excellent. Okay, sure. I'll write it here, or maybe uh, you know, Tonmoy can share it uh, with you, whichever way you would like to. You you could you could tell us to it now or you or actually I no, I write it here. Yeah. I'm writing it here. It's okay. it I L O D A at gmail dot com. At at what dot com? Gmail dot com. At email dot com. Gmail. gmail. Oh, okay. Yeah. Google Google. Yeah, I've written yeah. it here as well. Yeah, yeah. we have we have our details, Ken. We'll get that to you. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate that. All right. Yeah, it's wonderful to know that you are, uh, you know, as so many astronauts from here who are uh, working in uh, NASA. And uh, you know, just uh, is there is there any uh, chances of you know uh, students doing projects or interns, uh, you know, with the, these people or at NASA? Um, you know, again, I'm not sure on the specifics with the yeah, relationship yeah, okay. to NASA, I it, yeah. but, but I do know that students are very involved with research with their professors, right. um, and there's a lot of intern opportunities. I wouldn't be surprised with our success rate with NASA and, and astronauts that there isn't some relationship that's been built. Um, right, right. So I, I can imagine there's something there or close to it or research that is pretty related uh, in space. So, in fact, yesterday I just watched a live broadcast of, of a, a, a TTU alum um, just went sent, was just sent into space yesterday. And so oh, wow. we go into the space station. So Texas Tech actually aired a live a viewing of this shuttle launch, which was kind of cool. Oh, wow. oh okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, so quite involved with that. Yeah, that's kind of neat. Wonderful. Um, okay, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Swati. We'll be in touch with you uh, with all the information. Uh, Tanmoy, you have more questions who people want to ask? We've got a couple of maybe five or six more minutes. No more live questions. Uh, just there are a few, but I have answered them on chat. Um, I guess there's one on astrophysics. I guess you've answered that, uh, Kent, as well. Right. Um, so, uh, Kent, just to if if, if you could do a, a quick summary of um, you know what students. So you know, I, you know, after listening to this presentation, I may want to even apply to uh, you know a graduate program. It You're sounds like you some amazing, amazing stuff. But can you just give us a, just a, a a summary of if uh, you know after hearing this presentation, I'm excited. I want to apply. Uh, you know, either if I if I'm an 11th grader or some of our students are, are you know as early as 10th, uh, but particularly our 12th graders, what they need to do, um, you know, to apply to get started. Obviously, we'll facilitate that with them. But sure. um, you know, just your thoughts, uh, your or, or Ashton's thoughts on. Um, th these are the things I need to do. I want to apply. This is a great university, great opportunity. Yeah. Well, we we'll, we'll we'll do we'll do this as a call to action. So if especially a 12th grader right now, um, I I would encourage them to go to the www.appliedtexas.org website, um, where the um, where where it all starts right and so with that we get your information and then and then communication can really start as well um, and then uh, really it's just a academic preparing um, preparing to to live abroad um, once we get the application and then documents proving um, 
you know, clarifying for the I-20. I-20 is a document you take to our embassy and ambassadors, and then um, then you can get the visa. So a lot of it is just preparing to live abroad. Um, but the academic, if you're if you're in 12th grade or starting it, hopefully you've proved yourself at, the, at this point. Academics are good, um, and, then, and then it's just going through the application process. Anything to add, Ashton? There. Um, I'd say if you're in 10th or 11th grade, be thinking about taking the SAT uh -huh. and even taking it again your senior year in the fall. So if you apply, let's say in November, and you submit an SAT score, but it's not as good as you like it to be, you can take it again, let's say in January, and you can, if you do better and it qualifies you for a different ranking of scholarship, go ahead and submit that score because it could change the scholarship amount that you get. But I'd say the most important thing is making sure you're prepared and taking those tests like the mm -hmm. TOEFL and the SAT because you can't wait last minute, try to apply and get those test scores in. Right, right. No, fantastic. No, this is, uh, this is wonderful. Thank you so much. What I'll tell all of our audience members is uh, we will all be in touch with you. Um, we've got the presentation and, and Kent's gonna have some materials as well that we'll send out to everybody. And you know, for all of you who really wanna get started, we'll, we'll aid in that. And obviously you've heard, uh, you know, Kent and Ashton and the whole team. Uh, you know, I'll speak personally. We've worked with uh, Texas Tech uh, over the past year or so. Um, and you know, we've had students who've been accepted into the university. They make it extremely easy. It's a great process. You know, the people are wonderful, um, you know, to all our students and stuff like that. So, um, you know, it'll be, it'll be a very, uh, it, it's a very easy and, and as stress-free as you can get uh, in this process. So, you know, we'll, we'll reach out, we'll get you all the information and uh, hopefully we'll do another uh, webinar soon. Maybe with even your, some of your international ambassadors as well. Yeah. Uh, Kent and Ash, that, that'd be great. But that listen, would... thank you so much for taking the time. We really enjoyed it, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thank you. I appreciate it. And then if I could just add, right before saying goodbye here, um, when, when I send the information, feel free to contact us and ask us questions and be in open communication. We are here to ask, ask and answer any questions that you may have. And, and um, for students and parents alike, we, we, we love talking with you. So I appreciate the day. It's been great talking to you about Texas Tech. And feel free to contact us. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you, Yuri. Yes, and, thanks. All right, thanks.